Okay, Newton's law of cooling. Let's talk about this formula and work an example to go along with it. So big T is gonna represent the temperature of some object. Little t is gonna be the time. A is gonna be the difference in the initial temperature and the surroundings. Um, okay, gonna be some sort of constant. It's the continuous rate of cooling. And T sub S, uh, the subscript is going to indicate the surrounding temperature. Um, so, those are all listed out. Um, let's talk about how to actually get through an example though. All right, so on this particular example, we're given a hot bar of iron at 1000 degrees Fahrenheit is then gonna be quenched in oil at 250 degrees. After three minutes, where we take the temperature of this iron and it's 600 degrees. All right, so a few things to take note of here. It starts out at being 1000 degrees, but then we put it in, the surrounding is gonna be 250 degrees. And we're gonna say that stays the same. So T sub S, the temperature of the surroundings, that's locked in at being 250. Now, the rest of the information here, we're basically given two ordered pairs. Um, these ordered pairs are gonna come in the form, little t, our time is going to be kind of the input and the temperature big T is gonna be the output. So the first ordered pair that we're given is, we take the temperature as we initially get it. So at time zero, it measures a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Then we take the temperature again, three minutes later, and we find that it's 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically we have these two ordered pairs and we're gonna use these one at a time um, to find all of our variables. Um, initially what we wanna do is we wanna, uh, we're eventually in part A going to find that constant K, um, but before we do that, let's use uh, zero comma 1000. So zero is a value for our time. A thousand is the temperature and we don't know either A or K at this point. So as we fill this in, it'll be a thousand equals A times E raised to the K times zero power plus 250. Anything times zero is equal to zero. So we have E to the zero power plus 250. But using our exponent rules, we know that anything raised to the zero power is gonna be one. So really we have 1000 equals A times one plus 250. And we're gonna be able to solve for A by subtracting 250 from both sides. So we're gonna get A to be 750. All right, that's gonna get locked in here. So I'm gonna replace my question mark over here with A being 750 for the rest of our problem. Now we still don't know K, but that's where our second ordered pair comes in. So I'm gonna get rid of the thousand and I'm gonna get rid of our T equaling zero and I'm gonna replace it using three and 600. So our time was three and our temperature was 600. So now let's plug in to the exact same Newton's law of cooling formula, but this time we're gonna have 600 equals 750, using that value of A that we've solved for, um, E raised to the, still don't know K, times three power plus 250. Now we only have one unknown, we don't know what K is still, but this is an exponential equation. So let's go and isolate the exponential part. So trying to get E to the power on one side by itself. So what we wanna do is move the 250 to the other side. So we're gonna subtract 250 from both sides. Um, this is gonna give us 350 equals 750, E raised to the K times three or three times K power up here. Um, still trying to get E to the power by itself. So we wanna get rid of the 750, move it to the other side by using division. So now we have 350 divided by 750, which will reduce down. It could be 35 over 75, or even a little bit further, we could go 7 fifteenths. All right, now um, K is up in the exponent. We've isolated the exponential part. Now what we'd like to do is get it out of the exponent by using a natural log because our base happens to be E in this case. So we're gonna apply a natural log to both sides. And what that's gonna allow us to do because we're using natural log, a log base E 
and we have an exponential part e raised to a power, we're going to get really nice canceling out on the right hand side. And we're just going to be left with our exponent. So we have natural log of 7 15 equals 3k. And to get k by itself, we'll divide by 3. All right, so that's an exact answer for our constant uh, natural log of 7 15 all divided by 3. In our case, we are asked to get an approximation, round your answer to the nearest thousandth, so three decimal places in. Um, this is going to work out to be negative 0 0.254. All right, now that's going to be locked in as well. So if, what we can do is if we wanted to get a, a formula that goes along with this, we're going to put negative 0 0.254 in for our k. And our formula can be written as t of t equals 750 e raised to the negative 0 0.254 times little t plus 250 at the end. All right, in this first part, we were actually just asked for that constant, but we're going to use this formula to answer some subsequent questions. All right, so in part B, what we want to do is um, we want to figure out what the temperature of this iron is going to be after 12 minutes. So 12 minutes, that's going to be a value for time, little t. So going up to our formula, we can say t of 12 equals 750 e raised to the negative 0 0.254 multiplied by 12 plus 250 coming after. All right, so in plugging in there, I got this to be approximately um, 285.57. Um, I did that calculation utilizing the natural log of 7 15 divided by 3 to get an exact, more exact answer instead of our approximation, but this should round the same way if you use that decimal as we wrote it up above. And then finally, um, in part C, what we'd like to do is figure out how long is it going to take for this iron to cool off and reach a temperature of 350 degrees. We're going to round our answer to the nearest tenth of a minute. All right, so again to our original formula um, that we created up above there the, the, in the red box. Um, this time we're given a temperature, T of T, is going to equal 350. So in plugging that in, we have 350 on the left-hand side equals 750 e raised to the negative 0 0.254t plus 250. So we only have the one unknown, our time, which makes sense. That's what we're trying to solve for. All right, very similar as far as what we did up above. The solving down here, we want to isolate the e to the power. So we'll subtract 250 from each side. That'll leave us with 100 equals 750 e raised to the negative 0 0.254t. Divide by 750 to isolate the exponential part. Um, this will reduce down as well, um, 10 75ths or even further, 2 15ths is e to that power. 2, 5, 4, t. Um, apply a natural log to both sides. Get some nice canceling out on the right hand side because they're inverses. We're going to be left with that exponent, negative 0 0.0254t, and then divide to get t all by itself. All right, in getting t by itself, we can get the left hand side into our calculator. And because we were trying to round to the nearest tenth of a minute, we're going to go 7.9 minutes. All right, hope this helps in understanding a little bit better how Newton's law of cooling works. Good luck to you on it. Till next time.